Good morning, Cardano community. How are you guys all doing today? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed that chat from Charles there. What a gem um, in him and just uh, what he's done for the community here. My name's Freed for anybody who hasn't seen me, fellow content creator here covering everything in Cardano. I've got the pleasure of introducing our next speaker here for today's day number one at the Rare Evo conference. We're gonna be discussing the dawn of a brand new era in Web3 focused on data privacy um, and just personalization of uh, your data, right? Making sure to be able to keep that safe and to be able to do with that as you wish, as it should be. So without any further ado, um, if you guys would please join me in giving a warm welcome to Aran Barak, the leader of the Midnight Network. Thank you. Good morning. Very excited to be here. Can you guys in the back hear me? Very good. Uh, first time for me at Rare Evo. Anybody else here first time? Thank you for not leaving me hanging. Already met a couple amazing people, amazing technologies, really love this industry, but I can't help but feel we're facing a challenge with respect to our industry getting adopted by the world. And it kind of reminds me of something I experienced about 10 years ago. I was part of a fintech startup that was gonna revolutionize fintech industry by sharing data with encryption between the banks. Investors loved us, media loved us, customers loved us, until they heard we were using the cloud. Believe it or not, 2014, the cloud was not yet a commonplace in the banks. Now don't get me wrong, they all knew this was the future. And a few years later, everything was cloud-based, right? But back in 2014, they just couldn't make the leap. They were citing other, other person's computer, security issues, operational issues, cost issues. They just couldn't cross the chasm. Today, our industry is somewhat experiencing the same thing. What we're seeing is an amazing technology that the world recognizes is gonna be the future, but just can't cross the chasm and get there. So we try to figure out what was going on. Am I getting slides there? Hey, there we go. And we talked to many customers trying to figure out what is holding them back. What is the issue? Three things came up on top. Privacy, predictability, and stability. With respect to privacy, you just heard Charles talk about the private life and public life. How many people here I don't think are gonna have all their bank account and transactions all for the world to see, right? There are certain things we feel need to be kept private, and this is not just for consumers, also for enterprises. Enterprises are not comfortable putting all their public, all their confidential commercial information out in the public. We gotta figure out how to protect this if we're gonna enable them to use our technology. And there are even laws and regulations like HIPAA and GDPR that require people to hold data confidential. Now, with respect to pr predictability, I'm talking more about cost predictability. Ask any public company CFO or CEO about setting expectation, exceeding expectation. Budgets have to be set. Projects have to be approved. How can we do that when the PL is subject to transaction costs fluctuating? One day 50 cents, the next day 50 dollars. It's never gonna happen. We gotta get this thing under control. And lastly, with respect to stability, I'm talking about operational stability. When you deploy an application on a web two, right, you go to Amazon, Azure, I don't know, Google right? They give you multiple servers and different availability zones. If one of them fails, we got you. And if something goes wrong, you have a phone number to call somebody to choke, right? With a decentralized architecture, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? I don't know, right? It's not actually an issue of server uptime because we got hundreds of servers, thousands of servers. The issue really is, can I get my transaction on the next block? 
it's like standing on a train platform wanting to get on the next car. You can have the fastest blockchain, the fastest train out there, but if it doesn't stop in your station, you can't get a transaction, you're effectively getting a denial of service. And if we can guarantee the application is always operational, enterprises and businesses are not going to build on this technology. So we've created Midnight, as you heard Charles, as the next generation of blockchain to address these challenges. Our focus really is around data protection, protecting not just the data, but also the metadata. And we believe with these kind of technologies, we can help the world move into a new Web3 era. Now today, I'm gonna share with you some of the design concepts and some of the innovation that we put in to make that happen. And we believe with these type of technologies and these type of ideas, we can see a real change in the world and bring all the goodness of blockchain to the industry and businesses worldwide. But to get us started, I actually want to talk about a trilemma, and not the usual trilemma that you think about, like uh, decentralization, scalability, security. That's a technological issue. There's a user dilemma of how do I balance between ownership, privacy, and utility. You see, it's very hard to get the three of them working together. I'll give you an example. Medical records today are usually stored at the doctor's office. Why? Because if I store them at home, the doctor really can't have access to them. Or I would need to expose them so somebody can read them. And so we store them at the doctor's office because we have no choice. We got to get the utility to get the service. But who has access to my medical records? How are they being used or misused? And don't get me wrong, the doctors don't love this either. Doctors specialize in medicine, not in data protection. This is a huge liability for them. Audits, costs, et cetera, et cetera. And things are gonna get way, way worse very soon because DNA is just about to enter the game. We've now seen sequencing of DNA drop below $1,000 just a couple of hours, and in a few years, what we're gonna have is personalized care specific to our own biology. Where is my DNA gonna get stored? How is it gonna get used? If you think about it, I, I don't know about you guys, but every day I get a message from some company saying that my credit card information got stolen and they provide me with some compensation. If my DNA gets out there, that's an unrecoverable event. I can't get a new DNA like a new credit card. We have to figure out how to protect certain things and do that well. So we want to find a way to have the utility without compromising neither ownership or privacy. And to do that, we are going to bring in three types of technologies or concepts. First, we're going to use blockchain as a way to decentralize and have ownership and custody of our data. We're going to protect the data, protect not just the data, but also the metadata. Because it's important, not just, we can protect the data anywhere with some encryption, but protecting the metadata, that's the hard part. I don't want people necessarily to know how many times I went to the doctor or which doctor. And then we're going to use zero knowledge or ZK to get attestation from the private data without exposing the data. So I can show the doctor that I'm following a certain medical procedure or they can ask a question like, have I been vaccinated for chickenpox? And future technologies like FHE can help further do some interesting queries. But the hard part around this is a lot of people are saying, okay, yeah, magical triangle, we just figured it out. But I know there are a lot of very smart people in the crowd, um, and some of them are saying, sounds good, doesn't work, right? It's been tried before. To protect the metadata, you use a shielded token so you can operate the chain without revealing information about who's using and what are they doing. But that has value, and that sounds like a privacy coin. 
and privacy coins are not favored by exchanges, mainly central, centralized exchanges. So to get liquidity for your rewards, you're forced to go to DEXs or other means, and that reduces your access to turning your rewards into dollars that you can buy coffee with. And so fewer people are interested in getting those rewards, fewer people are securing your chain, your chain security drops down, fewer people are interested in using your, your chain because of that, and we got a death spiral that just ends up not being used. How can we have the cake and eat it too? Turns out there is a way to do this. The challenge is that we were trying to do too many things with a single asset. With that single coin or token, we were trying to both operate the chain, give security, governance, rewards, staking, everything. But what if we use two assets instead of one? So at midnight, we designed a system where you have two assets to operate the chain. There is an unshielded token called Knight for midnight. That is something that everybody is comfortable with. Every ecosystem knows how to work with wallets, bridges, exchanges. It secures the chain, it provides rewards and governance. Holding the night token generates a shielded resource called dust. And dust, because it's shielded, can operate the chain and protect the metadata. Now, a lot of people are asking, wait a second, you didn't really solve anything. But dust is an asset you cannot transfer. It's like energy. It decays very quickly. It doesn't hold value. It cannot be used to exchange value. And so it cannot be used as a financial instrument in any shape or form. And that means that we're not kind of getting into money laundering or any kind of, kind of trouble in that area. And those two work together very nicely to give you the privacy, but still have access to all the regular stuff of unshielded token that you like to do. But the beauty of this design is it doesn't just solve the privacy it also tackles the other two issues that we have. Because now that I have two assets, I can control the price of dust, the shielded resource, and I can provide price predictability so a budget can be applied. In fact, it's so level that you can create a gas station. And that means that we can access Midnight as a resource using fiat. When I use Google, let's say BigQuery, I don't know how it works behind the scene. I pay $100, I get access to the API, and it does what it says on the brochure. Imagine accessing Midnight as an API, paying with fiat, and it does what it says. It would feel for enterprises and builders like any other web service. And it also tackles the issue of scalability because Thus, the shielded resource acts as a capacity unit. Using the example of the train, night is like a season ticket, like a reserve capacity. And it generates a ticket for the same seat on the train. You need more seats on the train, you need more capacity, buy more night, generate more dust, get more access. This really helps with the issue of SLA and having operational stability. And this really unlocked for us a whole bunch of use cases. We opened up the DevNet late last year and were overwhelmed with over 2,000 applications from people trying to build things. And you see some examples here on the screen. Anything from ESG, where carbon credits could be tracked without the need to expose the vendors or the procedures or KYC where you can have KYC for DEXs in a decentralized manner, or you could have even banks use KYC to make attestation about loans to an outside institution. Banks can turn a cost center to a revenue center. Or real world assets that for the first time 
could be exchanged without exposing all the details about the transactions and what's happening. And you see a lot of other examples here and I'm every day overwhelmed by the ingenuity and innovation that people bring in. But we're not stopping here. This is a little bit of roadmap. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of uh, clicks here. Um, we are just weeks away from testnet and we'll be launching mainnet early next year. Most of what you see here on this slide is either already done or in the works and has been the contribution of many players. In fact, Midnight is already a multi-entity project, not just IOG building this. And I want to thank the community for all the contribution and everything they're doing to help us. But having a smart design is not enough. We realized we had another challenge. How do you launch a new chain? How do you get it to be operational, active, successful? Because every other chain starting from scratch is facing the same challenge. Anybody wanting to use a chain would have to or would want a chain that is already have a lot of security in it, players in it. And how do you grow it later? The way we thought about this is you have to kind of, you know the saying, have to walk before you run? I'd say you have to bike before you fly. Anybody here learn how to ride a bike? Not a single one? Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, the first few pedals are the hardest, right? It's like you're completely out of control. You got to kind of pedal a little bit. Once you get enough velocity, you got it going. How do we get midnight to go from a cold start to velocity. So instead of taking the usual route of making big hype and doing all the usual things, we decided to partner with Cardano in a partner chain model where Cardano stake pool operators are going to help become block producers secure and build midnight. And of course, they will get rewarded and the stakers will get rewarded for that. That gets us kind of off the ground and going and gets us to velocity. But beyond that, that doesn't mean that we are forever tied to Cardano. In fact, Midnight is not uh, uh, based on Cardano technology. We don't share any code base. We're not a layer two to Cardano. We're just partnering for the launch. And later, we're actually going to kind of part away once we get to enough velocity you know they'll let go of the bike and we can keep on riding but it doesn't mean that we are parting away completely we'll still have a very strong relationship with Cardano in fact we believe very strongly in a multi-chain world I don't know why the tribalism exists but developers in my mind and I used to be a developer use whatever tools are at their disposal to accomplish the task and they are never loyal to one library or one service. In fact, I don't know the, an example, if any handyman comes to your house, they don't just come with one tool, right? They got a toolbox with many tools, one for any type of job that needs to be done. And so we believe that the future of Web3 is one with many chains working together. And we're going to invest in that, not just technology-wise, but also marketing-wise, ecosystem-wise, funds, projects, etc. And so we will partner with Cardano for the long term. Now, to really get there and then grow, we know that we need to win the hearts of developers and make this a technology that they would want to use and be happy using. I think the first thing to tackle is learnability. People don't like to learn new things and requiring them to learn a new domain specific language just, just creates a barrier, which is why we chose to use TypeScript as our smart contract kind of framework and also for all the APIs. 
and in fact, I know we're using ZK, and ZK is hard. You don't need to write uh, all the circuits. We got some building blocks for you if you don't want to do that. And then we wanted something that is very versatile. You never know how developers are going to use the technology. Sometimes they'll use it as a layer one, sometimes as a layer two, sometimes they don't even call it what layer it is. Sometimes they need data protected items, sometimes none. So Midnight has both shielded data elements and unshielded data elements. And you could have selective disclosure. In fact, you can have programmable disclosure for various use cases, businesses, uh, policies, and compliance reasons. And finally, as I said, very important for us to have composability. And we've invested in, I'd say, an unusual technology like using Pluto Eris crypto curves that are pairing friendly with non-ZK blockchains like Cardano. So a Cardano smart contract can understand at the stations from midnight out of the box without needing to do anything extra to make things work. I want to quickly recap what we've covered. I spoke about the trilemma. How do we square the privacy, the ownership, and the utility and make them work together? We looked at the technology of blockchain, data privacy, and ZK making that work. Using two tokens, two assets working together to give you predictability, privacy, and, and the stability of a chain. And lastly, we looked at how do we launch a chain, not by ourselves, but in a partner chain model, and then giving developers the things that they like to use so they can be excited about building on Midnight and similar technologies. Now, I know I was very brief, so you have a chance later this afternoon to go see Dr. Beckman, our CTO. He has a session showing you all the ways on how to build Midnight applications. And there is a booth, I'll be there, and there is a whole team there to answer questions and give some more uh, of the secrets. But I'll leave you with this final thoughts. I think Web3 is poised to cross the chasm. It's up to us to not just fall in love with technology, but fall in love with the customers. And we do that not just building a, a blockchain that is fast or secure, but one that understands the table stakes that customers are looking for in terms of cost and data protection, privacy, and stability. Only then can we help them grow. And so I really believe 2025 will be a new dawn for Web3. And I want to thank you for joining me today and wish you a great conference.